Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, artist and crafter here on YouTube, and today I'm going to share with you a beautiful piece of alcohol ink art that I've made. A while ago, I went shopping at the hardware store, and I went to buy a couple of tiles because I wanted to try some alcohol ink art on them. And I was delighted to see this whole pack of hexagons. I have a secret love of hexagons. Okay, not so secret love, because I do hex charts for different coloring mediums for, for colors. And I had no idea that these tiles came like this. And I know that you can paint directly on them, so I decided to try it. You don't have to prep these, you don't have to gesso or anything, you just start in with your alcohol inks the surface is already perfect for them. So I'm going to do a couple of these, not all of them because we'd be here for days because it took me days to do this. Each hexagon started with a couple of squirts of different colors and I'm using ranger colors in these first couple and I'll use some pinata and then combining them in a few others and spraying them with air after adding alcohol to them and the air is coming from a Copic air gun, which is attached to a compressor on the floor. Supplies for all of this, of course, are in the doobly-doo. The Copic air gun, I have been told, may be discontinued at some point. But a regular air gun, like you would use for just regular airbrushing, putting ink into a little well, those are still quite available and they work the same as this. So this is just easier for me to grab quickly. And I'm going to just continue to add colors and air and alcohol until I'm happy with the look of it. The thing I found about these tiles is that you get a collection of alcohol and ink around the outside edges. And I had to figure out how I was going to deal with that on mine, also with this puddle. And what I decided was that for these, for tiles, it worked a little better to put a square of paper towel underneath my project rather than just working on the freezer paper that I normally have for alcohol inks because otherwise I got backsplash when I blew with the air it would jump back up onto the tile and it was really hard to get it to move down off the sides. But what I did discover as I started trying to work with these and, and make them so that the collection of ink didn't bother me design-wise was to try to get the ink to move as best I could and keep working it until I was really satisfied with where the color was ethereally across the piece. And that includes having enough open space because my, my style of ethereal alcohol ink art is very bright and white. There's lots of white paper in there. It's not generally filled in for the complete piece. So I wanted to still have that even on these tiny tiles and that required just using enough alcohol to move the color out of the way. And then I went in with a glass pen that was dipped in alcohol and I had to keep figuring out how to kind of tap it off a little bit because it would end up with a ton of alcohol that would pour onto the piece. I tried doing a little bit of puddle of ink on the, on the paper surface and picking that up. It worked a little bit and I would end up with some circles that were color rather than circles that were white because of the alcohol. So it was somewhat helpful but it was a challenge to make it work because that puddle would drive pretty quickly and sometimes I would try to add alcohol to it to wet it and then it would end up being practically just alcohol and defeated the purpose. But each one of these is going to be completely different. You can't replicate the techniques. I can't even tell you how I got some of these looks. I really don't know. The only thing I can give you is the tips that I did find out, which was this thing about the glass pen and trying not to have too much alcohol in it so that you would get giant, giant pours of alcohol on them. So my goal for each one was to make it not look like there was a collection of ink around the outside edges. I'm going to continue showing you a couple. I'm just going to turn on some music and pop in if I have something that I think is worth sharing and let you just watch a few of these happen. And then I will definitely show you how I assembled the piece at the very end. But 
you'll see that I have certain things that I was trying to eliminate. I wanted very soft lines, except for when I went in and deliberately made the dots. And that combination was really pleasing to me for the whole piece. As I was trying to make some of these areas that were very solid into areas that were less solid, I would put a dot of the actual ink on it and then blow it and that would lessen the amount of ink on the surface so I didn't have these big, dark, full areas that were really sticky and thick. In trying to make a light dot in a controlled area, when it didn't work to have it on the paper, I tried just touching the glass nib to the outside of the bottle that had a little ink on it. That worked a little bit, sometimes better than others, but you could give that a shot too. Now I've switched to using some of the Pinata colors, a different brand, and one of the things about them is that they are brighter colors in general. They're not as grungy as some of the Ranger colors, but they have other effects that they do that were less pleasing. So there's a positive and negative side to each. The negative side on these is that they tend to collect more pigment around the outside edges than the Ranger ones do. And for some effects that looks really great to have those super hard dark lines, but they were more difficult to work with on the tiles than the Ranger ones were. But they still worked beautifully, just took a little more finessing to make them work the way I wanted.
on some of these I tried to create a more solid pool of color in certain areas and that would always seem to lead to more collection of ink around the outside edge. So tilting it so that the ink would run a little more off of the piece itself and onto the paper towel, tilting it until it would be able to touch it and suck that ink up or pushing it with the airbrush so that it moved it more quickly off of the tile before it dried tended to work a little bit better. I finished the hexagons and I'm ready to mount them. I've got this frame that I purchased and I was thinking I was just going to paint something into it and then I realized this was actually going to be the perfect place to put my hexagons. So I started aligning them and off camera I had gotten a general arrangement done that was pleasing to me. I did try originally to see if I could make them join. So when one yellow would be next to the other, it would flow into it, and it would have a flow across this whole thing. And then I realized that was gonna be nearly impossible because I couldn't control any piece specifically enough to get them to be a puzzle that would join, but that would certainly be something to try someday and see if I could get them to move the same way across each one. And that might be something I do someday because these tiles are super inexpensive. So it'd be really easy to pick up another set and make a big project out of trying to create one unified piece instead of all these little disparate ones. But I tried arranging them so that I'd have some pinks, blues, yellows, reds, purples in each of the areas and keep them different enough from each other that they weren't all clustered in one area and the designs were all spread out. Some of my favorite combinations were the most unique ones, like the purple and green was interesting. There's a dull blue with a golden color. That's kind of nice. There's just lots of really interesting things that I got to play with in doing this as I've been getting myself more acquainted with how the colors work together. In the ethereal alcohol ink class that I taught on my website that you can still go take if you're interested in learning more how to do this, I wasn't as much focused on many colors because many colors makes mud. And this was an opportunity to play with lots of pairings of colors and create a beautiful piece of art that I could hang in my studio. So I glued them all down with some E6000 and pressed them all into place. Make sure you press them relatively quickly in place because that stuff dries fast. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you liked it, click the like button. Subscribe if you haven't yet already. And there's links to the supplies in the class in the doobly-doo. Thank you. Have a great day.